Hey, this is Mike. I'm actually fist pumping right now because I'm so excited to be here at Sparks Toyota in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. It's a, it's a dealership that I've really, 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 really wanted to um, develop a relationship with. And here it is. I finally got my chance. And these people are really awesome. They're super professional. Uh, they have awesome, of course, they have they sell Toyotas. So, of course, they have an awesome brand. They also sell Scion. And so, um, so the Toyota dealerships in my area, this is the highest rated Toyota dealership. So I was really excited to be able to come here and make some videos to show you uh, the different product line that Toyota and Cylons have. And thank you to Sparks Toyota for allowing me to share them with the world. Hey, this is Mike. I'm checking out a 2015 Toyota Corolla. Now this one has the uh, the S Sport package and um, has like a sporty look and does have the 1.8 liter uh, four cylinder engine so you get awesome gas mileage and just overall this is a very attractive car for a lot of people uh, it meets the needs of you know the average person who's looking for some really solid rock solid um, reliable transportation and a really competitive price and also get a really good resale value out of this vehicle they do hold their value very well so the Toyota Corolla uh, this one in particular with the sport package um, has a you know kind of sporty look but let's check a look at the front here it has the projector headlights now they are LED low beam is LED headlights high beam is halogen I'm not sure why, what the split is um, I guess this is the the projector is the LED here and then the halogen bulbs over here turn on uh, to help um, give you the illumination uh, with the high beams um, in conjunction with the LED but the LED themselves are really um, they stand out as far as the the brightness the whiteness of the light um, it's just pure light coming out of the uh, light emitting diode um, system but anyways really uh, really cool feature there with the projectors and I wish I could show you this car at night hopefully I will soon now this one does have the uh, the fog lights as well and the daytime running lights and that two-tone with the silver and then the black grill there that really sets this car up for me especially when you pair it up with those wheels so you got some like a black painted uh, aluminum wheel here and they are 17 inch so you got the black painted as well as you have some aluminum showing through they have a pretty cool spot, uh, sporty look that sets off the rest of the vehicle now this vehicle was factor uh, well, not factory but dealer the, the the dealer tinted the glass so normally the glass is not tinted from the factory but that's something that you probably want to add so they go ahead and add it for you so let's take a look on the passenger side here's the inside of the, the passenger door and you see you do have some some white stitching there in the in the padded surface there for your armrest and um, you have some accents here with some blue and then some uh, silver accents there on the door which looks awesome and then you got a bottle holder and a little storage pocket there and you continue that trend here on the dash with the silver and blue and the the stitching now the seats they are leather extremely comfortable leather seats you have to sit in these seats to really see what i'm talking about but you do have the uh stitching there as well the french stitching this one does have the the corolla floor mats they're kind of like a berber carpet um feel floor mat now i do highly recommend upgrading those when you buy a new vehicle uh, ask the dealer for the rubber slush mats uh, they really help out with keeping the floorboard clean and, and then just overall durability and longevity there is a pretty significant glove compartment there And the back seat has plenty of room. Um, the back door is basically the same quality and, and, and looks as the front, basically. 
but the back seat is uh, I mean the front seats are all the way back so you can see even with the seats all the way back you still have plenty of room um, for leg room there as well as um, just seat comfort overall very comfortable bolsters here on the seats and you also have an armrest that doubles as some cup holders as well and speaking of cup holders let's say you have a center passenger you can still have some more cup holders with this little cool thing that pops out and they give you some more cup holders you got some storage space there in the back of the seat front seat Right, you have the disc brakes in the front and the back uh, so it gives you that really extra awesome stopping power so here's the key and the key has um, a lock and unlock and also you can open up the trunk so let's go ahead and open up the trunk by holding this button it won't do it with it started but um, there's another way of doing it the engine's running so it's kind of has a lockout feature but anyways uh, let's look here in the back quickly um, we have the, the S badge over here on that side, and then you've got the Corolla badge, and then the Toyota. You have the single rear exhaust there, and kind of a, I don't know if that simulated, um, this right here is like, it looks like carbon fiber look to it. Probably not real carbon fiber, but who cares? <laughs> Has the look anyway. So let's go ahead and open up the trunk using the button here, the latch switch. And you notice it pops up to this point here and you just kind of gently touch it with your finger, it goes right up. And you've got plenty of space back here. Um, trunk space, cargo space, all that good stuff. Also, it does have a spare tire. So that's something that a lot of manufacturers are not including um, from the factory. So you make sure that you know whether or not you have a spare tire before you drive off the lot. Don't want to find out the hard way. Alrighty. Has a little bit of a spoiler there, which helps out with the, um, the coefficient of drag, basically the aerodynamics of the vehicle. And I'm going to show you how to open up the fuel door there which is on the driver's side it's right next to the trunk just pull that up like so so now there's the fuel door and so basically um, you can unscrew that you hang it right here on this little hanger um, so that way it doesn't uh, scratch your paint and you can when you're done you just close it up so let me give you another point of view here back and just look at that leg room um, and the size of the seats the bolsters you notice they do have a, quite a bit of distance from the floor to the seat um, that really helps out when you're you know, have long legs or whatever okay so here's the inside of the driver's door and you know you've got the, the little uh, tweeter speaker there you got a speaker in the door bottle holder you also have your window controls for your front and back and your power door uh, locks there you have the power seat on the driver's side just the overall look of these seats is awesome with the black leather and the, the white stitching even here on the headrests very impressive looking and right here so we've got your uh, the adjustments for your side mirrors is located here and so you just choose which side you want and then you adjust it here. Your dimmer switch for your interior lighting is there. All right, so let me go ahead and hop in. It's pretty quiet. All right, so let me just um, Put my seat back a little bit so I can give you a little bit more context here of what the interior looks like. Okay, so let's start here on the steering wheel. 
Now the steering wheel is a black leather wrapped hand stitched steering wheel and now this one has the um, black thread on the steering wheel stitches as well as you have some stitching here around the outside of the steering wheel um, center there where the, uh, where the Toyota emblem and the airbag is located. So also you have these little bolsters here. Um, they are cool looking, but they also serve a purpose. Uh, so when you have your hand here and you're driving, um, if you need to abruptly move the steering wheel up, you have a, a stopping point. You don't actually slip um, like that. So these are handy um, as far as like, no pun intended there, really helps out with the gripping the steering wheel um, if you really need to make an abrupt move, especially if your hands are sweaty or uh, something like that. So you notice it's got some buttons here on the steering wheel. Now, so basically, let's start here on the right side. Uh, you do have the ability to, once you pair a Bluetooth phone with the system, you can answer calls, hang up, or make calls with these three buttons there. This is a very, very good safety feature. It keeps your hands on the wheel, eyes on the road, and you're still making and receiving calls. Um, so you don't have to worry about somebody reaching you while you're driving. You can actually um, use the Bluetooth system in this vehicle to basically use your phone to, um, to, to communicate. You stay in touch with your friends and family while you're traveling, no problem. This button is the display button. Now that corresponds with your gauges here. Um, you notice there's a, um, there's a speedometer gauge to the right. There's a fuel gauge to the right, on the left is your RPMs and then your temperature. But right there in the center, you'll see that there is a uh, screen there. So it says outside temperature, 73 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you have your odometer at the very bottom, 17 miles. And then you have your trip info, and then the big P stands for you being in park. So I'm going to push um, the display button, and it's going to go through. It's going to give me more information in the center. Average speed, 0 miles per hour. At lap time, 32 minutes settings so you can press and hold the button going into um, your settings and well I'm gonna skip that let's just go keep on pushing the buttons here so you can see all the inf different information cruising range average speed last time and settings press and hold so you can press that hold it down and it'll eventually go into the settings and then you can change your language you can make it to where your eco indicator can turn on that kind of stuff um, let me push the button and then I'm going to go to exit All right. so you get the idea it just kind of cycles through that information the rest of it the top and bottom stays the same so you know and this is stuff that you don't necessarily have to constantly go into it's just there in case you need it Alrighty, now um, also on the steering wheel is paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheel actually. I don't know if you can see this paddle shifter right here. And this gives you the ability to cycle through and give you more um, control over the shift points uh, when you're in manual mode, which we'll get into that in a few minutes. But there's the pedal shifters. I just want to point those out real quick. Here on the left side, you do have a volume control for your radio. So you can adjust your volume up and down. You can also um, you can also mute it by pushing that button mutes the radio okay so I'm gonna turn it down there's a back button now these all these buttons correspond um, to the radio so the radio is a, it's a touchscreen radio system and the audio is just part of that so so right now uh, we can kind of scroll through and the radio up and down will take you to AM XM FM, um, AM, all that good stuff. It cycles through your different uh, presets there. Now, if you go right or left, then it's seeking through uh, that particular uh, band. Like, say, if you're an FM, you can seek through FM stations, stuff like that. So that's basically what uh, these buttons do there. This is all for your radio. And then your mode there, if you without holding it, um, you basically change from uh, Bluetooth radio am fm uh, bluetooth or satellite you know basically just um, where you want to get your music from 
Now there's other ways of playing music through the system and I'll show you in a second. Um, so right here you've got an eject button and that is for your CD player which is kind of hidden right in here. And um, so there's another uh, phone button there to the right. And you do have a traditional volume on this side, tune through the stations on that side knobs. Uh, pushing the audio tells you, you know, gets you into the screen where you can find out which station you want to be on, your presets, all that good stuff. You can also adjust your sound controls. Um, apps is the kind of the main screen where you can go into uh, your navigation. And you can see uh, your navigation screen, your map. Uh, you can also push destination, put in a specific address, that kind of stuff. And you can zoom in and out um, to get your bearings, get you uh, right where you want to want to see compared to other things let me go back to apps um, your audio your phone eco uh, this is where you can see some pretty cool stuff uh, so like say your average speed your elapsed time your range and um, you know you can keep records of all this stuff on different trips and then it gives you some real-time information on that side pretty cool and then home will give you a basically kind of like a default screen where you have your navigation on the right and your radio on the left um, which apparently is the most convenient um, uh, home screen, I guess. That's what they decided. So down here is your climate control. You basically adjust your temperature right there, and you can turn it off. You can have an automatic mode. Front and rear defrosters is here. Uh, where you want the air to blow, you can adjust it there. Uh, your fan speed your um, recirculate the air and turn it on and off your air conditioning. Now, I just want to mention that recirculating the air uh, not only does it continue to cool the same air so it gets colder than, um, than with it off but it also keeps outside air from entering the vehicle so if there's some kind of smoke in the air or smog or some kind of outside odor that you want to keep out you can just turn that on and that'll help um, that situation. So below down here is a some more buttons in front of your shifter. Uh, you also have a 12 volt power supply there. Your heated seats left and right. And then right here is your USB and auxiliary inputs. Um, so that's, that's more ways besides the radio and the CD and the Bluetooth, that's more ways of playing music through the sound system. And I, I use the Bluetooth in my car all the time. I put a little Bluetooth device in there with thousands of songs on it and I'm good to go for hours and days and weeks or whatever. So here's the shifter, and um, so basically, let's go ahead and just put it in reverse, like so, and you'll notice the backup camera pops up here. And the backup camera is a wide angle view. Um, it's a wide angle view camera. You notice things are a little bit distorted, uh, you know, because of the wide angle view, but uh, that's what the lines are for. So basically, uh, you can see from the bumper to the sky, and then a really good range there from left and right. And you, but you can see the Earth looks like it's a little bit curved, like the, it's like really small. Uh, this is because of that um, that distortion effect that a wide-angle lens has. Otherwise, some people call them a fisheye lens. But basically, those lines there help you, um, you know, kind of correct that distortion that gives you an estimated size of your vehicle as you're backing up plus this red line right here is like that's the limit you don't want to back up any closer than the red line that is the absolute limit any more than that you're going to be um you know just too close so anyways that gives you like an you know too close limit there so i like the way toyota has done that okay so let's continue on there's neutral there's a drive that's your normal drive position you just drive around like that and um, you know you don't have to think about it it'll do its thing keep you in the right gear ratio but if you want to manually adjust the, go through the gears using your paddle shifters um, you can pop it over there in manual mode and not only can you use your uh, your paddle shifters to cycle through the gears but also you can kind of has like a ratchet shifter feature here so I can, you know, cycle through the gears um, just by doing that number. So I don't even have to, um, don't even have to use the paddle shifters I don't want if I don't want to. Uh, you can use that, and he can always go back in the drive like that, and you know the engine, uh, the vehicle will take over the shifting of gears for you. Alrighty, so there's, so that's how you go back in the park. 
So it's a pretty cool feature, um, the sport mode, um, the sport sporty ability uh, to, you know, cycle through the gears and, and really um, have control over those gear ratios when you need to. There's your emergency brake, just kind of a standard lift up, push that to release it, that kind of thing. But here you've got a traction control and a sport mode. Traction control is default is on. So right now it's on. You just you don't have to think about it. It's always on. You push that just to turn it off. Um, that's the only time you want to turn it off is uh, if you're stuck in the snow or ice or mud or whatever, um, and you know that you're going to spin tires. So you can turn that off to um, have the ability to uh, spin tires and stuff. Otherwise, it's going to keep you from spinning tires. Sport mode. Uh, this is where you want to tell the car that you want the highest performance and that you don't care about gas mileage. So this is going to um, use a little bit more gas, not a huge amount, but it will use more gas, but you will get the highest performance this vehicle is capable of in sport mode. All right, so these, here's these cup holders, and um, let me get that out of the way. So the cup holders are kind of interesting because they are adjustable, but they are manually adjustable. So you've got these cup holder here and here. But you have this center piece. This center piece can be completely removed, so you can use all, utilize all that space. But you'll notice on this piece it has these different grooves here, and then you've got grooves there in the cup holder. So you can move it to say like this position, to where you have a tighter size, a smaller size on this side, and a larger size on this side. Um, so, so that way you can really fine tune, um, you know, your cup size, but you could have to do it manually. Um, or you can put it right there in the center, or you can move it down like that and have this side be the big side and that side be the little small side. So you can manually adjust it um, if you want to. And you know, there is a little bit of space here uh, to put that, you know, like a card or some kind of small item right there um, and there in the center. All right, here's the center console armrest here. And uh, this basically has two places underneath it. One is, um, let's see here, get, there's two buttons here. Okay, so one here on the left, on this side. Uh, this will open up a small, just a really small shallow pocket. Now this is to keep stuff that small, of course, but also to a quick access. You just quickly um, access it. Now the top of the lid is recessed in uh, to where, you know, course there's going to be more room than just that it stick up sticks up a little bit so you could put stuff there but if you really want to have more space you have this storage pocket here which is a little bit deeper and gives you the ability to you know pile up stuff in there it's kind of like a junk drawer all right the rear view mirror has a flippy design there and um so you basically night mode and day mode is, is is manual. You do have some some lights up here, quick access reading lights. You have the ability to turn the interior lights on there, or completely off, or turn on when the door is open here. You do have a uh, mirror in the visors. Um, same thing on the other side, and you also have a sunroof, and the sunroof controls are here. So let's go ahead and uh, open up the shade, which is very handy to have, uh, so you don't always have to have the sun on you. So there's open there, and you can open it up like so. You can also tilt it like so. You close it up, and you can always close the shade. So you have that, all those options there. And also I want to point out, um, it does have a clock here. It's hard to pick up with the camera far away, but I have to get them really close here. And there's a digital clock here in the center, so you can really stay focused on the time if you need to. Not a lot of cars uh, have a separate clock anymore. I think that's really good to have that separate clock versus have it you know, mixed into a touchscreen. So I'm glad they were able to do that. All right, so let's take a look back here. See what the rear visibility looks like. And just overall look of it.
All right, so let's look under the hood. Before we do that, I want to show you the, the window sticker, actually. Um, before I forget, you can use the pause button if you want to look at it in greater detail. And also, I'll put this a link to this information in the description. Um, so anyways, I'll show you that. So, let's check out the 1.8 liter four-cylinder. Oh, they got it covered up in plastic. It does have a dual VVT system. And VVT is uh, something in modern engines that helps give you the greatest gas mileage while maintaining, giving you the power when you need it. So VVT is a very good um, um, modern engine technology that that was really helped out with fuel economy and all that too, and still maintaining and actually improving uh, uh, performance. Alrighty, everything's, notice everything's really tidy um, underneath Toyota's hoods. There's not a lot of messy wires and all that stuff. Everything's well placed. Um, it does have, has crumple zones uh, on the metal. Um, but yeah. That's why they hold their value. That's why Toyotas dominate as far as holding their value and uh, car sales and all that stuff. But anyways, if you have any experience with the 2015 Toyota Corolla, um, or any other year model for that matter, or if you have any questions or clarifications, maybe I skipped over something, got something wrong, please leave it in the comments. I'd really appreciate your feedback. Also, thank you to Sparks Toyota here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. For allowing me to show you everybody the world uh, this vehicle I think is an exceptional vehicle Toyota is an exceptional company and I'm really happy to um, to be here at Sparks Toyota uh, I do not work for Sparks Toyota but um, I work for you so if you can you know send me a tip I'd really appreciate it, it makes all this possible also you can like and subscribe to my channel share with your friends all that good stuff I'd really appreciate that as well it helps me out and Thank you for watching. See you next time.